Number 83. Which of the following compounds require the most energy to convert one mole of the solid into separate ions? And then we have a multiple choice question. Oh yeah, we love multiple choice because we can always use our theory to kind of reason and whittle down the answers. Now, in this case, we need to find out which one out of these five, right, whether it's K2S or K2O, CAS, CS2S, and CAO, which one requires the most energy to take that solid and turn it into its ions. Now, in this case, we always like to think back to a lattice energy, because if you have a high amount of lattice energy, you're going to also require the most energy to convert the solid phase into its ions. Now, a lattice energy is basically the same thing, it's just that it, it uh, converts one mole of the gas into its gaseous ions. But in all of these, we all have to just see what the ions are. So let's draw them out. So we have K2S, we got K2O, beautiful. We have CAS, just kidding, yeah, CAS, <laughs> CS2O, and CAO. Now in this case, the states don't really matter because whatever the you know highest amount, whether you're in a solid phase or in a gaseous phase, it, do it doesn't make a difference. The only thing that really matters is what are those ions. So let's break all these ionic compounds, and they're all ion ionic compounds because they all contain a metal, whether it's potassium, calcium, or cesium, which is CS, and looks like our non-metal choice is between sulfur and oxygen. So let's just break up the um, two elements, right? And then we'll add the charges to turn them into an ion. So we have K and sulfur, so potassium and sulfur. For the next one, K2O has potassium and oxygen. Then we have calcium and sulfur, cesium and oxygen, and then calcium and oxygen. Now, let's just put in the charges. Potassiums, they are in group one. So that means that they're a plus one charge. I'm gonna group my calciums together. Calcium is in group two, so that's a plus two charge. And cesium, if we look on the periodic table, it's all the way down on group one as well. So it's a plus one. Sulfur and oxygen, they're both in the same group. So they're in group 6A or 16, depending on what your periodic table says. So they're both negative twos. So they uh, gain two electrons when they become an ionic compound. Now, does it even matter um, if we're balancing the equation? That's not the point here. The point here is to notice what's going on with these ions, but it's always good practice to just make sure that you know you balance your equations. So you have two potassiums for K2S, so you do need a two in the front. You have two potassiums for K2O, so you do need a two in the front. You got two cesiums, so you need two CSs, uh, and now we are balanced. Okay, so now, as far as lattice energy goes and getting the higher amount of energy, the most energy, right? Increase in lattice energy. There's two properties that basically, you know, either raise a lattice energy or decrease it. And the first thing is that the more electrons that are transferred from the metal to the nonmetal will always increase the lattice energy. So higher numbers, higher electrons being transferred, the more the lattice energy. Mainly because the more electrons that you transfer, the much more deep the connection and the tighter the bond is. So two electrons transferred beats out one. Three electrons transferred would beat out two. And the more that you, you know, get, you know, the more the electrons that are being transferred, lost and gained, the energy will increase. So we're just going to look at these charges to maybe kind of pinpoint um, any ones that we can get out. This is where we start reasoning. Now, remember, we don't really care about the balanced equation because all we're doing is we're just looking at the charges between your metals, and then you're looking at the charges between your nonmetals. Now, in this case, all the nonmetals that were picked here were all negative twos. So that makes no difference. And on this side, each nonmetal is going to gain 
two electrons. So the difference isn't going to come from the nonmetals, it's going to come from the metals. And notice how some of them have a plus one charge, like potassium and cesium, and the other ones have, well, the calcium has a plus two. The higher the number makes the more energy. So in terms of potassium and cesium being a plus one versus a calcium being a plus two, um, two, we'll say, or I guess we'll say here, two beats one. So in this case, we can get rid of all of the uh, equations or the compounds that have a plus one charge. So now you eliminated A, goodbye, B, goodbye, and D. Thank you very much. We are now down to 50-50. So now we just have to figure out between these two, calcium with sulfur and calcium with oxygen, but we already, dis we already discussed that since the sulfur and the oxygen, they both have the negative two, that has nothing to do with the electrons transferred. So the next property that is directly linked with lattice energy is atomic radius. So we need to figure out where the sulfur is on the periodic table in terms of where oxygen is. So here's the atomic radius trend right here. How lovely. And just remember that your atomic radius is always decreasing as you're going across a period and increasing as you're going down a group. So in terms of where sulfur and oxygen are, oxygen is at the top and sulfur is at the bottom. Now it turns out that sulfur would be larger and oxygen would be smaller. And the reasoning to increase your lattice energy is you want an atomic radius that is super small because the smaller your radius, the smaller the size of the atom, the closer those atoms are going to be. The more farther out, the more larger they are, the distance is increased between those two atoms or um, ions. So in this case, since oxygen is smaller than sulfur, it's going to have a, a, a lower radius. And because of that, the lattice energy would increase. You would need way more energy to break up the bond between that calcium and oxygen so that they act independently of each other. And that answers the question. So I would put down E as my final choice and then I'd go on to the next multiple choice question. And that's how we do it here. <laughs> I hope this helped out. Let me know in the comments. Thank you for viewing the video. Subscribe to the channel. And I look forward to helping you in future lessons. Good luck on your tests and quizzes. Good luck on that multiple choice. Always reason it out, all right? You guys got this. I'll talk to you soon. Okay, bye-bye.